Okay, story time. If you're not interested in hearing this epic Lord of the Rings level of lore and details surrounding how I came about seeing this film early, just skip to this time code. Anyway, story time. So my friend and I were just casually walking around the cold, windy streets of downtown Chicago as most normal people do, when suddenly, as we walked into the tall grass, a wild Chicago International Film Festival appeared. Because it was faster than me, obviously it attacked first, I mean, who doesn't know that? And it used the move manipulative marketing tweet at me, indicating that they were selling rush tickets and that I had a chance to see the movie early if I got to the theater as early as possible. Naturally, my friend and I bust out those Pokeballs and start throwing that shit until we caught ourselves not just two tickets, but the last two tickets. That's right, my friend and I got the very last two tickets for Pak Chan Wook's latest film, and we were so ecstatic that we ran around screaming like little goblins, claiming that we would be telling the story to our future kids when we were 40. It was fucking great. We were just exhilarated. But unfortunately, the people behind us didn't feel the same way. They were, uh, let's just say, not great about the fact that they didn't get to go in to put it in words. But whatever, that's the story. It was fucking awesome. Anyway, let's talk about the real reason you clicked on this video, me reviewing Viewing easily one of the best films of 2022 so far, Decision to Leave. Now, for those of you unaware, Decision to Leave is the latest film from Korean filmmaker Pak Chan Wook. This is the same director responsible for films like Old Boy, Thirst, and The Handmaiden, the last one being my favorite film from this director. So, naturally, I was excited to hear that he was making a new film, and when I got the opportunity to see this film early at the Chicago International Film Festival, let's just say that it's exactly what I wanted to be and more because man oh man does it deliver. For those of you unaware, Pak Chan Wook actually won the Best Director Award at the Film Festival, and it's clear why, because the directing is easily the best part about this film. The actual look and presentation of this movie is just mesmerizing to look at. The way the film communicates not just its characters, but how it presents them and how they choose to interact with each other proves why Pak is a master of his craft. The way he sets up his angles, the shots he chooses to focus on, and more importantly, the specific moments where he chooses not to focus on something, the sudden zoom into characters, the incredibly creative ways Pak chooses to transition between scenes, everything conveys something to the audience and adds something unique to to the plot. Just something as simple as two people texting each other is presented in such a fascinating and interesting way. It not only communicates the necessary information in a manner that the audience can understand, but it's also communicated in such a stylish way that it keeps them engaged as well. There are so many moments like this where the film takes such an interesting approach, like how the main detective character spies on people, that if the same movie was made by a less competent director, it wouldn't reach the same level of impact that Pak is able to hit. Additionally, there are several moments throughout the film where certain aspects of the frame become blurry while the center of the focus becomes hyper detailed. And while some directors like Hack Snyder may do it because fuck it, it looks cool, Puck uses it to emphasize what is important and what isn't. By focusing on one specific thing, Puck is not only able to prioritize what is the most important on screen, but it also helps us understand what the character themselves believe to be the most important. Considering that our main character is a police detective, we get a lot of insight into how his mind works, how he solves cases, how he goes about interrogating suspects, how he stops suspects from escaping, etc. He has a very specific process that makes him a successful detective, and the way this movie is filmed helps complement what this character is thinking. There are just so many ways that a less experienced director would have told this story and followed this character in such a boring, bland, unspecial manner, but the way Puck tells this story and the moments he chooses to focus on, or the way he chooses to film certain scenes, helps elevate not just the story, but the characters as well. However, I can't discuss the direction of this movie without the cinematography, and man is it gorgeous to look at. This is easily one of the best looking films I've seen this year. Every single frame of this movie is not only gorgeous to look at, but all have some level of importance that either gets reincorporated in the movie or helps it stand out in a rewatch. It's clear that a lot of effort was given to make this film look as great as it does, as every single scene, whether it be landscape shots of the mountain or beaches, quieter moments where characters are just talking and making conversation, or the more intense scenes of action and thrill, everything gets treated equally, and so every frame gets the same level of polish and detail. This is a movie that rewards both multiple viewings and attention to detail, and while I've only seen this film once, I I know that in a future rewatch, I'll definitely be able to pick up more things that I missed in the first watch. There are so many moments where the film stretches out certain scenes where they completely allow the audience to bask in what's going on before cutting. It's really awesome. Something I really love about Puck's approach to filmmaking is when to cut and when not to cut. And unlike some movies where they just cut every two fucking seconds making the experience as nauseating and shitty as possible, Puck likes to take his time. He lets scenes play out, even if it's just a very low-stakes scene where two people are just talking to each other. He lets those scenes play 
play out. We immerse ourselves in what these characters are doing, the things they do that make them who they are, and even little insights into their motivations and personalities. We learn as much about this world and the conflict as much as the main character, and Pac accomplishes this by taking his time, letting scenes play out, whether it be close-up shots on the characters or medium shoulder-level shots of characters just talking about K-dramas or cases they've never solved or whatever. It's really awesome to sit there and just fully immerse yourself in whatever the hell is happening. However, as much as I would love to continue jerking off about the direction and cinematography of this movie, I also have to talk about other aspects of this film, because man does it deliver on so many other things, especially tone, because tone-wise, Decision to Leave was kind of unexpected. While Pak Chan Wook's previous films definitely had comedic moments, this is the only film that I would say is the closest to being a quote, comedy, and while I still wouldn't say this movie is a laugh-out-loud comedy or anything like that, there were a surprising number of comedic moments that I just simply wasn't expecting. There were several characters in this movie that were essentially comedic relief characters, and while I certainly didn't expect those kind of characters in a Pak Chan Wook film, they were definitely a welcome surprise. I was laughing pretty consistently throughout the entire movie. In fact, this entire film is kind of unexpected in retrospect because one of the most unique aspects of Decision to Leave is just how different it is compared to the rest of Puck's filmography. A huge part of what makes this director's filmography stand out is his very unique and stylized approach to two things, violence and sex. What makes violence and sex so essential in his movies is not just how shocking and out there they can be, but they are integral aspects to the characters and stories of Puck's films. While some directors like Eli Roth may just show a bunch of hardcore gore and violence or super explicit porn level sex fantasies just because they fucking felt like it, the violence and sex in Puck's films are never there just because, they are there because they are integral parts of his movies, and his movies would not be the same if they are just surgically removed. Old Boy is what it is because of its hyper-stylized approach to violence, and The Handmaiden is what it is because of its hyper-stylized approach to sex. And the reason why I'm mentioning any of this is because these familiar aspects of his films are very much removed from Decision to Leave. While there are sex scenes and action scenes in Decision to Leave, they are very much downplayed and not heavily emphasized because Puck John Wook didn't want them to be a distraction to the main story he wanted to tell, a romantic love story. According to the director himself, this removal of the sex, nudity, and bloody violence was very much an intentional choice from Puck as he stated that he wanted the themes of love and romance to be the main focus of attention, and I think that was a very wise choice. Because Puck himself stated that he considers himself a romantic and all of his movies are about romance in some way, but because such stylized violence and nudity are so prominent in his films, he decided to drop all that shit in favor of a more straightforward story about the wrong two people who fall in love, and I think Puck pulled this off excellently well. I've seen a lot of critics call this the most romantic film of all time or something like that, and I have to agree. This is a romance film disguising itself as a detective story, and I think that's fitting because I'd say a lot of the characters are doing just that, disguising themselves in favor of getting what they want, love. Speaking of love, I fucking loved all the performances in this movie as all the actors were truly awesome to watch. While every actor definitely brought their A-game to this film when it came to the performances, Tang Wei, and uh, hope I'm saying that correctly, easily gave my favorite performance as she was fucking awesome to watch. Throughout the film, you are very much kept in the dark and on edge in terms of what Tang Wei's character is about to do, or what her motivation is for doing or not doing something. She plays this very manipulative, almost femme fatale type character, where you're not exactly sure if she's being 100% honest or if she truly means what she means, and Tang Wei gave an amazing, amazing performance, keeping me and the rest of the audience on edge. I truly think she's Oscar worthy, so if the Oscar nominations come around, I really hope she gets a nomination at least, because she fucking killed it. Pak Hale also gave a really great performance as the main detective character as well. He towed the line between smart, savvy detective and goofy, sort of dumb, love-struck guy, and while most actors would fuck up one of these sides or not pull off both well at all, Puck did a great job playing both sides of this character, so I gotta commend his performance as well. Everyone did a great job in general. All the acting was solid all around. Anyway, that's all I'm gonna say for now. I'm not gonna go any more in-depth about Decision to Leave, because then I'd have to get into spoilers, and I want to save spoilers for a future video essay, as this film hasn't been widely released yet, and I want as many people to see this movie as possible. Plus, I do want to see this film again, and I feel like I'd be better equipped to make a spoiler-filled video essay after seeing the film one or two more times, but anyway, that's enough for me. If you're watching this video and you're even somewhat interested in seeing this film, I highly recommend you check Decision to Leave Out, as it is absolutely one of the best films of 2022. I do have a couple of minor issues with the film, most of them just revolve around the film's length, as I do think it overstayed its welcome a little bit, but again, this is such a minor issue, and I'm sure in a rewatch, I'll get over this minor issue pretty quickly. Anyway, that's all I have to say without getting into spoilers, so please watch it, and I'm going to give Decision to Leave a 9 out of 10, but it could be a 10 in a future rewatch, who knows, but for now, I'm giving it a 9. Thank you, bye-bye. <laughs>